Okay, so we're here still in the Zenab booth. We're here in the Ed site for load testing uh, pod. We're here with uh, James Millington. James, go ahead and introduce yourself. Okay, so I'm the product manager for the Edge site product line. Uh, I've actually been with Citrix for about seven years now, uh, previously over in the UK, but now out of Boston with uh, the MSG group. Um, previously, had product management responsibility for all of the management components in the in the enterprise package, but now, like I say, product manager for the, the Edge site uh, product line. And a very funny guy, if I might add. Yeah, all right, something so... Something like a good setup, thank so, you. <laughs> so, James... <It's> funny. Uh, <laughs> So, James, uh, you know, you're talking about Ed Site for Load Testing. The first question I'm asking everybody is, you know, why is this important to our customers? <laughs> okay, just very quick and easy. Have you ever had a customer say, how many users can I get on a Zenat box? I have never had that never question. That. No, well, I'm, I'm, no, all the time. <laughs> okay, so this is the answer. You know, normally it's, the answer is it depends. It depends on your application. It depends on what your user is doing. It depends on the hardware. It depends on the configuration. It's kind of tricky. Now, with, with Ed Site for Load Testing, we can actually provide you, you with the tools to be able to go get that answer. It's right. very, very simple to use. You simply record a script. It's like uh, recording a script in Excel, recording a macro in Excel. You press record, you open up your application, you use your application. What Edge Site for Load Testing does is it records all of the, the, the mouse clicks, the interaction with the application, and the window titles that you get back. So what you see here in this instructions, this is a script that I recorded, and I've broken it up into sections. So word ready. When Word first appears on the screen, when you launch an IPA session, you get that uh, title, Document 1, Microsoft Word. Edge Site for Load Testing is going to look for that title, and it's going to time how long that takes to, to come about. Now, we've re recorded uh, sections in the script here. Create new file. I create a new file. That's the mouse clicks. Alt F, N. New document window comes up. Click Return to create the new file. I type some text. I open up help, press F1, word help comes up, I do a search on printing, hit return, word help return. So it's very simple. It records everything that you do. It's very simple to understand. It's just mouse clicks, window titles, key presses, and pauses. So it records it in, in the sort of the real time of your, your users. Once you've got your script recorded, you then simply play that back however many times you want concurrently to create user load. So we were doing some testing last week. We were running 250 sessions against uh, a Zen app server and understanding how it behaves. Now, what Edge Site for Load Testing does when you replay the sessions is it gives you performance information in a, in a, in a very different and concise way to what we have uh, previously. First, you get your user count. This is the number of users that are on the box. With this, it's just a simple test. We've actually got a number of demos running from this box, so it's a low user count. We're actually running up to 12 users running concurrently. So we load up, we run concurrently. Over the top of that, we can put the performance information for the box. Now, it's important to state that we're not adding anything to the, the Zen app box. We're not installing anything. So we're testing what you will deploy live. You can see there, that's the CPU running up to averaging sort of 55, 60%. So that's the CPU performance correlated to the number of users. You can see as we're adding the users, the CPU goes up. As we level out the users, the CPU, there's a bit of bouncing around, but it's generally, it's leveling out. And then over the top of that, we can apply your application responsiveness. How responsive is my application? When I click on start, how long does it take the menu to come up? If I'm completing a complete order process in an insert application here, how long did it take to do that full order process? And we can drill into this performance, or we can overlay, uh, we can overlay the performance on the, the graph. For this, we're not really seeing much of a performance impact. It's actually staying pretty steady. There's a slight blip there. What metric is that? That is the application responsiveness, the time it takes to, com to complete these folders. So you'll see in my, uh, uh, in my results here, this, is, this mirrors my application script ever heard over here. Word ready, use word, close word. Word ready, use word, close word. This is the time that it took to complete all of the actions in each one of those folders. So here we see a slight delay uh, in use word, 111 seconds, 113 seconds. In the parentheses, that's the effect on user impact. That's the difference between the, the fastest time that it ran and the average time that it ran. So how is my average user impact uh, of the effect on the user. I can then drill into that. I see the subfolders that I create to create new files. I text use help. Where is the problem? Well, I've got a slight 
issue for this particular demo in insert chart, which is actually spawning Excel within a Word document. I can then go into there and see each of the individual window headings as they came and see exactly the point in the process where I'm seeing the slowdown. So if it, for example, am I making a call to a back-end database, as I load up my users as my user count increases, is it taking longer for my database to provide the information? Is it dealing with more? So, so this is like taking a Microsoft, pardon me, a magnifying glass to your apps and really getting down to the to a low level to find out exactly what's going on and what the impact is, the real impact is on specific transactions. Yeah, well, it's, it's actually the, the impact of load on those transactions. Right. So as you, as you build up the load on your box, now, as you saw, all I'm doing here is I'm going up to 12 users and I'm staying at 12 users, and this is where I've defined that load. I actually go, for the first four minutes, I go from one to 12 users. For 360 minutes, I keep at 12 users. If you were actually doing a test, how many users can I get in the box? You'd actually write a test that ramps up those number of users over time, and you see how the, uh, the performance of the box is impacted and the performance of the application. So is it the application? Is it the box? Is it a back-end resource? You can reach your conclusion. What you're seeing there is those 12 user sessions all running. This is much more impressive when I've got 150 sessions all running from a single machine. Um, so this is just a... You can run it from an XP machine or a server class machine. This really um, is uh, all dependent on the memory. It takes between 15 right. and 30 megabytes on a, on a session to create an ICA session, depending on what's happening in there. So we were running tests last week with 150, uh, 150 sessions running from a quad-core box. You can go in and watch the, uh, the application replaying. So you saw what I was doing. I was typing some text. I was inserting help, I was opening a chart, that's what this will go through. So it's really identifying the impact of load on the way that your application responds and your box responds, enabling you to identify what is my bottleneck. Is it I can get 150 users on a box running at 80% CPU in average and my application responsiveness is all fine? Does my application responsiveness break down before then? Am I memory bound? Hey, I'm looking at 64-bit servers. You know, I kind of had an idea beforehand with my 32-bit servers. I could get about 40 users on a box. So I kind of built with that benchmark. What am I doing with 64-bit? That benchmark's going to So do you have some uh, pre-built scripts available? If you go on the CDN, this very script is available. So you can go there and you can get up and running very quickly. If you go on to citrix.com slash demo, there's a 20-minute video there which goes from clean installation to actually recording a script, running a load test, and interpreting the results. It takes 20 minutes to start to finish. Go take a look at that. The big thing that I think is also going to be great for customers is the fact that once you've got this, whenever there's an application update, a uh, hotfix for the operating system, and you need to regression test your environment, see if there's been any instabilities introduced, that's always been a problem for customers. Now, all you do is press play. You've right. got your script. You know how it's supposed to behave. So you do a comparison of the before and after, am I okay to roll that into my live environment? There is a, an evaluation version on Citrix.com, I'm sorry, on My Citrix. If you're a Zenapp customer, go into My Citrix, download the evaluation, uh, evaluation product, watch the video, get going, see how it runs with your application, because it's application independent. All it's looking at is what's on the Zenapp server. It can be a web app running in a browser, it can be a Win32 app, anything, it's a custom app, doesn't care about the app, all it's looking at is where you click and the window titles or the bitmaps that come back. Go to All right. Play. Excellent job. Thank you, James. Thank you.